Ayrton, it has been a quite incredible season for you. You are the youngest ever three times world champion, three times in four years. I have to ask you, on behalf of your despairing rivals, is your motivation still as high as ever? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I... I am, uh, as you said, young, I am healthy. I am as committed as ever to my passion, to our passion and to my profession. And uh, the main thing is to, to find ways, uh, time after time, to stimulate myself in my own world, or in my own funny ways, uh, to dedicate a lot of my time and a lot of my thinking and keep up with the commitment that uh, is quite high to continue to be successful. Now, we, we all need goals in life. We have to aim for something to attempt to achieve it. And I know you must feel that way. Now, with three world championships, 60 pole positions, 33 wins, what, what can be your target? Fangio? Well, I, I said this several times before, and uh, as Sterling or this evening expressed here just a few minutes ago, um, I think no matter uh, who in the modern Formula One, be myself or any younger drivers that will be successful in the future, can achieve be four, five, six, how many titles you can imagine. No one will ever take away anything that Fangio has done in, in the past of motor racing. He has established uh, the titles, the records, but also he has established a way of doing things as a, as a gentleman, and as a man. And um, all I can say is that I, I, I should be trying hard to get as near as possible to him. Now, you had, you had seven wins in 1991, but it was by no means an easy year for you. Um, it's been a special season, of course. We finally got another championship. It's been a good start, as you all know. We had our difficulties, we had uh, a great championship, particularly with Nigel, but also Patrese was there. And um, it's been particularly rewarding because uh, this championship was again a result of everybody pulling together as strong as ever uh, to the same direction. And that has been the efforts that um, McLaren has done. Honda and Shell and all the sponsors that have helped us to pull out from the troubles we had and, and finally win uh, in some style in Japan. Now, now here is a question I have been longing to ask you ever since it happened. When you walked back at Hockenheim after you had run out of petrol for the second time in two races what did you say to Ron Dennis? <laughs> well, I, I, I keep learning every day, you know, about many things in life. And one thing that I have learned lately is that uh, you should uh, monitor very carefully your words, particularly if it's not your <laughs> native language. <laughs> but uh, I'm afraid that uh, at that uh, occasion, in the motor, in the in the truck, on the back of the truck of McLaren, uh, I was not monitoring my words at all. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a particular moment there, but I think uh, we now know each other well enough to understand the some of the frustrations that we 
both go through at different times in different ways and uh, and I think uh, we try to get the best out of each other and uh, I have to to say that uh, I won my first championship with McLaren with Rome I won other two championships and uh, that is something that does not happen often in the same team you know to the same driver so um, it's something that uh, only time will will prove but I value very high now when uh, when you uh, won the first four Grand Prix of 1991 you you had done something that no one had ever done before in the history of Grand Prix racing we all thought that this was going to be another 1988 with McLaren winning. Did you say to yourself, that's it Ayrton, I'm, I'm there, I've won? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, you should ask all the team members. <laughs> well, before we went to, to the Phoenix Grand Prix, uh, when we first tried the car in Portugal, uh, I had two months off, so I was fresh and full of motivation. And, uh, I didn't have a good, I had a good feeling because we made a step forward in all areas, but uh, I didn't think we had done enough uh, in some areas uh, to be very confident. Uh, of course, we won the first four races and I kept saying to everyone, you know, we're not there, we're not there. And uh, many people were thinking, well, when is he going to be happy? Because he's on pole, he's winning, he's leading from lap one to last lap and he's complaining. And uh, but I, the people inside the team knew, they understood, but it took a while to to get everybody really with the right momentum. And uh, we then saw subsequently to Monte Carlo uh, a number of races where Williams was very strong and uh, we were struggling. But uh, on the other hand, uh, it has that has made this year special because uh, we all pulled together afterwards and in a very short time we we were able to to recover and to match them and to keep the number one in our car next year. Well now in less than three months time we are all going to be at Kyle Army in South Africa where you got your first world championship point in 1984. You've heard what Williams are doing Luca Montezemolo is at Ferrari and he's an extremely competent man. Tom Walkinshaw is at Benetton and he's an extremely competent man. Uh, you're going to have an even harder time next year, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, it could be an even more exciting championship next year again compared to 91. Certainly 91 has been the the most difficult and the most exciting because different cars, different drivers won. 88 was fantastic and is the one that I like most because it was my first one. Uh, and I had a top driver beside me with the same equipment, but we were well ahead of everybody else in terms of equipment. And I think 92 could be a continuity of 91. Hopefully not with the same struggle as we had halfway this year and hopefully I can go back to the pits every time after the race with my racing car and not uh, with a lift or with a pace car. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think it could be very exciting next year again. Ayrton, we, we have an expression in English which says, a little bird told me. Now, uh, a little bird told me. <laughs> well, a little bird told me that at the FISA presentations in Paris last night, you made a special presentation of a crash helmet to Jean-Marie Ballest. Is that true? That's, of course that's true. <laughs> uh, well, you just said, I made a presentation and uh, it was... Um, something that I did with some hesitation for a moment <laughs> and it's something I've been sincere it's something that I I did um, with some reservation but um, I found myself in a position w unexpected position where 
after dinner, um, Bobby Constant Yuri start to call on the on the microphone and some of our colleagues to talk to them, and I never expect that because the two times before I was there in the past, that wasn't part of. And um, I had the helmet with me. Still undecided what to do with it, uh, thinking that perhaps if I give him it would be after finishing dinner. And uh, when he then called me, uh, and Dude Bob called me on the on the microphone. I went there, I started to talk to Bob, and I got involved in the in the climb, in the atmosphere, which was very friendly, very genuine, and. Uh, and um, then I, I, I call Jean-Marie there. We made some jokes, and uh, I was able to express some of my feelings in a in a sincere manner, and uh, at the same time, uh, without any knife anywhere. You know, it was just really a sincere way and joking and. I think it just came right. It was unexpected, but it came just right, and uh, I believe uh, he took it uh, the right way, the same as I did. And I think it was was good. It happened unexpected, but it, I, f I was happy afterwards that it happened that way, and, it, and I was able to give him my helmet in sincerely. And so are well we. Ayrton, you've got a very busy schedule. We are extremely grateful for being with us tonight. You have a nasty cold, I think. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ayrton Senna. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to just add a few words. I, I am like he said, still young, 31, but I've been involved in, in, in motor racing from four years old, believe me. <laughs> and um, when I come to England in 1981 to participate in the Formula 4 championship, it was my first season of racing cars, until then it was only go-karts. And uh, I've been through several seasons here in different categories, successfully. Fortunately, and um, lots of the things that I learned and that I subsequently use in Formula One have come from England because here I learned how to race as a professional. I learned how to observe the flags. I learned how to follow the marshals, the starting procedures, the testing procedures, setup of cars, uh, the relationship with the engineers, mechanics, team owners, team managers, and that. Um, has made a lot of my personality in terms of motor racing. I know that um, often I don't get the best press in England, but uh, I suppose nobody's perfect. I try hard, and I try hard to, to be better, to improve. And uh, I'd just like to say thank you to all of those people here in England that have given me the opportunity from 1981 to come through all the way and in such a relatively short period of time, get so much success. Thank you.